up to this present moment, we have a shared history. Um, we know that history more or less. But I tend to t take things, look at things very personally and say that we all have something we don't really want to deal with, all of us. Mm -hmm. We don't want it discussed. We get angry when it's brought up. I don't mean in public, <laughs> just if it's just us talking to ourselves. We don't want to talk to ourselves about it. But that almost always is the thing we have to deal with to get better. Sometimes we deal with it for a little while and then we get away from it because it's too intense. But until we deal with it personally, we'll never get better. Many of us go to our graves and we never get better and we're comfortable with that because we set up everything in our lives to go with that thing we don't want to deal with. That's the position we're in as a nation. Until we can have honest dialogue about this history, not blaming white folks or blaming black folks or pretending like it's both sides have a point all that is a waste of time. We have a shared history that has been successful and that has been a failure. Let's take the successful parts on it and figure out how to make those. Mm -hmm. But until we, until we recognize it, until we can be truthful about it, we're just wasting our time. We're changing the laws around. It's the same thing with a different word. How, how can the arts help us deal with that? The deal arts are that? honest. Walt Whitman. What he was writing during the Civil War about black and white people, man, you never, you can't believe if somebody was walking around writing that. Mm -hmm. You can't, the only thing that saved his life was nobody was reading it. <laughs> <laughs> Him and Emily Dickinson. <laughs> you know, I mean, Winslow Homer. Right. Winslow Homer was in the South painting black people and they wanted to, yeah. they wanted to lynch him. He was like, they look good to me, mm -hmm. boss. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Frank Sinatra, Benny Goodman. I mean, it's in our history, we just don't know it, of people saying, man, how can we go for this? And uh, we need to teach it to our kids. It's not a matter of education, it's what are you educating them in? We have profound moments in our history worthy of great celebration, but we don't know what they are. So we're reduced to chanting USA, USA. And we're reduced to things that are beneath what our actual history has been. I'm inspired by Abraham Lincoln's second inaugural address. I'm inspired by just sentences like, uh, I had one I was reading the other day where he said, uh, let not traditions long established be dismantled for light and transient causes. That made me think of the Wawa pedal. <laughs> you know, and uh, I'm inspired by, we could go on and on, Carter G. Woodson, Miseducation of the Negro. I'm inspired by the fact of, what, 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 what can we pick? The fact of, of Vicks Bidebeck and Louis Armstrong. The fact of swing dancing and the fact that people in our country in the 1930s, regardless of race and age, danced together. The fact of all these things. It could be anything that I look at. I looked at The Wizard of Oz. There was a TV show on about how they made that. Man, just, just the care and the love and the concern and the We've done unbelievable things in this country. So I'm, I, when I look into American history, and I, could, I look into any branch of it, I can look into some of the darker corners of our history, and I still see people who are always fighting for that not to be the reality of our, our nation. And uh, I sit here tonight, I'm always cognizant of that, that those people were victorious. Sometimes there's the feeling that they were not victorious because the victory is not complete, but they had to leave something for us to do and we're gonna leave something for the next people to do. So I'm always inspired when I, I look into our history.